redox equations, redox reactions. And so as we look here, we've already really identified how to classify chemical reactions according to the five main categories, but now we're going to be getting them a little bit more in depth. And so we're going to recognize them not only are they synthesis, decomposition, combustion, single or double replacement, but we're also going to talk about what can I happen into a reaction in aqueous solution. And so the first one, the one that this video deals with, is redox or oxidation reduction reactions. And so in order to identify whether it's a redox reaction, you have to be able to figure out the oxidation number. Now for us, we're going to do that for atoms and compounds. And I'll show you how I do that. Then we're going to look at reducing agent, oxidizing agent, uh, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, and that kind of thing. So here we are really only going to be focusing right there. So we're going to be dealing with redox reactions and how do you identify them, how do you know, and then really talking about the details of those reactions. So redox reactions happen when you have a change of oxidation state. And what that really means is you've got a transfer of electrons. Uh, these are, in all honesty, the most expensive reactions, period. These are the reactions that, ha that are oxidizing the bridges and buildings to make them unsafe. These are the reactions that are causing erosion of you know, architecture. It's the reactions that are allowing us to charge our cell phones and other devices. These are important reactions and that's probably why I just decided to give it its own video. It's important. Now these are usually, but not always, synthesis or single replacement reactions. So let's look here. If we're going to look at identifying them, the first thing we need to do is talk about what does it mean to be oxidized or reduced. And that is what I have here. So oxidation is a loss of electrons. That is going to correspond to an increase in oxidation number. Or alternatively, if it's not a loss of electrons, you might get more bonds to oxygen. Reduction, on the other hand, is gaining electrons. You're gaining that negative, so you're gaining a reduced sign. That's going to give us a decrease in oxidation number, and it's going to possibly, if it's not gaining electrons, it might be reducing the number of bonds to oxygen. Okay? Now, the way that I remember this is one of these two things. It depends on which one you like, but choose one. So, oil rig. This really just means that oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. So OIL, oil, RIG, oil rig. Oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. Same thing here. Uh, Leo Gurr, this just says losing electrons is oxidation, gaining electrons is reduction, okay? So that's one way of viewing it. We also need to consider what is happening here. And so we talk about something is being oxidized, something is being reduced, but we also have to consider how that is affecting the reaction itself. And we do that with our agents. So an oxidizing agent is the substance, specifically the reactant, guys, it has to be the thing on the left, that is being reduced in the chemical reaction. By being reduced, by gaining electrons, it is taking electrons from something else and causing that thing to be oxidized. So the reactant that is reduced is our oxidizing agent because it's causing the oxidation of somebody else. The reducing agent is the reactant, again this is on the left, that is oxidized in the chemical reaction. Same thing here, it's being oxidized. So it is 
giving up electrons. Well, because those electrons can't just be destroyed, they have to go to somebody. If you're being oxidized, you're forcing someone else to be reduced. And so here, whatever reactant is being oxidized is the reducing agent. Now, in terms of identifying oxidation numbers, there's a few different rules here. And this looks like a lot, but it's going to be nicer than you think. The oxidation number of any element in its native state is zero. So if it's a Hofbrinkle like hydrogen, it's zero. If it's sodium, it's zero. If it is chlorine, Cl2, it is zero. Manganese, it is zero. Native state. The oxidation number of oxygen in any compound is minus two. Unless it's a peroxide, which I really try not to use, and then it would be minus one. But magnesium carbonate, oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. Um, what else is there? Oh, sulfuric acid, minus two. The only exception is if oxygen is in its native state, like O2, then it's going to be zero, or if it's in a peroxide. The oxidation number of hydrogen is going to be plus one, unless it's in a metal hydride. So if it's um, HCl, H is plus one. HNO3, plus one. If it's something like sodium hydride, which we really don't deal with, that's when it would be minus one. Now, for most, for the most part, elements in compounds are going to have the same oxidation state as what they would have if they formed a charge. However, exceptions are like row three and down and column five and to the right. So like phosphorus, sulfur, those things. Um, the other things are transition metals. These can be multiple things because they can have multiple charges. So when we're doing this, we're going to solve for row three and down, row five and over, or a transition metal. So the sum of oxidation numbers for everything in a co compound, a neutral compound, must add up to be zero. If it's not a neutral compound, it's going to add up to be equal to the charge. So let's look at this really quick. Here's how it would look. Are these redox reactions, and if so, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, what's the oxidizing agent, what's the reducing agent? So let's go ahead and just identify this first by main category. And I'm only going to be dealing with the top. Sodium reacts with chlorine to produce sodium chloride. Two things on the left, one thing on the right. So this is synthesis. Now, we haven't talked about the other types of reactions yet, but I don't see an acid, so it can't be acid base. I don't see a gas, so it can't be gas evolving. There's a reason why it's not precipitation, but you don't know that yet, so it's not precipitation. So let's find out if it's redox. So here we've got sodium chlorine and then sodium chloride. So sodium is in its native state, so its oxidation state number is zero. Chlorine, this is a Hofbrinkle, it wants to be diatomic, so its oxidation state is zero. Sodium and chlorine, even though you probably know this, I'm going to make a table. I make tables over everything. So here we're going to have atom, number, oxidation state, and total. We have sodium and chlorine, and this is a neutral compound, so the total has to add up to be zero. We have one and one. Sodium is not an exception, which means in a compound like this, it has to be um, plus one. Hmm. It's not a charge, the plus should come first. So that gives us a total positive so far of plus one. Chlorine is row three and down and row five and over, so we would have to solve for this. But to make this cancel, plus one, to get to a zero, we have to have minus one. 
So the oxidation state here has to be minus one. So this is gonna be plus one, minus one, okay? Now, just for the moment, let's just talk about this. Na goes from zero on the left to plus one. Chlorine, and I'm talking about the element here, goes from zero to minus one. There is a change in redox number here. So this is a redox reaction. So if we were to fully characterize this, it would be synthesis and redox. Now let's talk about what those changes mean. I usually start with what's going down just because I think it sounds better. So I'm gonna look for what's being reduced. Zero to minus one, this is going down. And if you were in my classroom right now, we would totally be doing interpretive dance about reducing. And so this is reducing. And actually, I'm gonna rewrite this. So chlorine is reduced in the reaction, which means the reactant that contains chlorine, Cl2, if chlorine, the element, is being reduced, this reactant must be our oxidizing agent. There we go. So chlorine, the element, is reduced. The reactant is our agent. Now sodium goes from zero to plus one. This is going up. So an increase in oxidation number means that sodium is oxidized in this, which means the uh, reactant, here it would be sodium or sodium solid. If it's being oxidized, it's gotta be our reducing agent. And guys, this is how I write it even when I take your practice exam because I'm really afraid of messing it up. The opposites are terrible here. So let's do the next one. Down here we have potassium chlorate going to potassium chloride and oxygen. Now let's fully characterize this. This has one reactant, two products. So this is synthesis. Oh, I'm sorry, no it's not. Wow, I was, sorry. I was reading, trying to glance at my notes to see if there was something special I needed to say. So one going to two, this is decomposition. Now, we haven't talked about the other types of reactions yet, but let's just go through it. I don't see an acid or a base, so it can't be acid-based. Um, I know you don't know this yet, but I can tell you it's not precipitation. There is oxygen here, so this is a gas evolving reaction. Let's see if it's also redox, and the way we do that is by looking at oxidation numbers, okay? So here, um, hmm, I'm gonna do it up here. Atom, number, oxidation state, and total. Let's do it for K, C, L, and O. One, one, three. Total has to add up to be zero. K is not an exception. It's, you know, it's gonna form the same as what it does with the, um, with its charge. So this is plus one. Oxygen in a compound is always minus two. So three times minus two is minus six. K times one times plus one is plus one. The only way to get this to equal zero is to have plus five. Plus five divided by one plus five. So here this is plus one, plus five, and minus two. Atom, number, oxidation state, total, K and Cl, one and one. This is not an exception, so it's gonna be plus one. Only way to get it to equal zero is to have a minus one. So this is, no, 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 no. So this is plus one and minus one. Oxygen in its native state, zero. So I typically like to write this out. Okay, I don't like to just kind of view it this way. I like to have it nice linear. K is plus one on the left, goes to plus one on the right. It's not part of, it, it, it didn't change, but I'm gonna keep going. Chlorine goes from plus five 
on the left, 2 minus 1 on the right. Oxygen goes from minus 2 on the left to 0 on the right. So we know chlorine, the element, is reduced, which means that KClO3, the, the reactant that contains chlorine, is our oxidizing agent. I don't know why that keeps happening. What am I touching? Oxygen goes from minus 2 to 0, so this is being oxidized. It's going up, okay? So oxygen, oxygen haha, is being oxidized, which means the reactant containing oxygen, KClO3, is our reducing agent. That can happen. I mean, we've got two KClO3s here. One can be causing the oxidation, one can be causing the reduction, it happens. Um, and so that, that works. The big thing is the element is reduced, the reactant is the agent. The element is oxidized, the reactant is the reducing agent. Now we do have changes, plus five to minus one, minus two to zero, so this is a redox reaction. So if we were to fully characterize this in your, your homework, it's decomposition, gas evolving, and redox. You need all three there.